Welcome to The Shooting Show, brought to you this week from Hatfield House. It's a 2019 game fair, but first we followed Jeff Garrett down on crop control in Essex shooting pigeons over cut rate. It's going to be a hot day today, so uh, obviously making sure that we've got the dogs covered with water. Uh, I shan't be using them for much of the day this time of day because it is the hottest part, but later on in the day, um, when it gets a bit cooler, I'll, I'll use them. But if we do have to use them in you know middle of the day, at least we've got them, got a drink for them. And how hot it's going to be, I might be going into this as well. I need to see a few more than that, like, you know. Um. If they come like that, we might get 20. <laughs> it's been that long since I've shot a pigeon, I got a little bit excited there. Nothing to forget to put your, your the air defenders in. In these case, sends. Uh, well, here we are. Literally the second day of harvest. Uh, I've got a field of wheat behind me, which the pigeons have been going on, dropping in the tram lines. We're next to, which has been next to a field of rape. Um, 
I purposely haven't shot the field of wheat or the rape, purely and simply of my principles of not shooting birds that I know I can't pick up. But they cut this field of rape yesterday. Um, they're still rape in the middle, which the pigeons are still going on. Uh, they're still dropping into the wheat, so it's given me the perfect opportunity now to get out here, have a go, try and stop them eating the rape that's left in the field, and also put them off from going into the standing wheat. Um, we've been here probably set up for about 10 minutes, and we've got, I think it's about seven or eight in the bag already, so um, I think patience on my part will pay off um, and also I know that I can at the end of the day pick up virtually everything that I'm shooting. We'll uh, delete that first bit. What we call that, a right and a right? Yeah, because they're on the right sides, there's two rights. <laughs> That's the way to get them. <laughs> Decoying in well, yeah? Yeah, a decoy really well. We haven't got much traffic, but what what is coming? They're coming over, decoying in nice. They're coming round in the wind, as that one did there. Really nice landing, giving you every opportunity to do the job. If they'd only fly in a straight line.
And again, and again, and again. Yes, do, do. Well, we've been here probably about well, it's about four o'clock now, actually. Fact, so we've been here a good three plus hours now after we've been set up. Uh, had a nice start with pigeons becoming a nice bit decoy in an absolute treat. I must say, it is a it is a pleasure to get back in the hide, doing a bit of crop protection, doing something that I have always enjoyed doing all of my life, um, and to see the pigeons decoy like they have today, it is a pleasure. Um, we're, like I say, halfway through the afternoon and things have just slowed up a little bit but I would think the problem with that is because is they are still cutting rape stub or rape so the stubbles are appearing and the birds are dropping on there and um, finding somewhere else to feed. Uh, we've had a, been out there at a, at a you know, couple of pickups, dogs have been out with me. Uh, the good thing about it is, like I said from the start, is that most of my pigeons are dropping on the stubble so the dogs are just running about having a pick up, um, you know, it, it is a hot day, but I'm not overworking them at all. Uh, they're in, you know, they, that's what they're here for. Uh, when we bring them back into the back of the hive, they're in the shade, they're having a drink, they have, you know, plenty of water for them. And, uh, you know, that's the point of bringing the dogs, you know, they love it as much as what I do. That's their ambulance trackers. That's another day finished, um, we haven't had many this year just through lack of pigeons for whatever reason they are but now uh, the farms are just beginning harvest um, and also uh, today we've done a good bit of crop protection, we've got the bit behind us here which is seed rape, uh, we've been on the edge of a bit of wheat which the pigeons have been hitting hard because there's now a little bit of stubble it's given me a chance to go out and have a go at them. Um, finished up, uh, we've got 71 on the back of the trailer, on the back of the, the truck, which I'm very happy with. Really nice to see pigeons decoying. You know, I love to see pigeons decoy the way they have today. Right into the pattern, um, in the middle of the course of decoys, bang, lovely, you know, really gone well. And with all what's gone on in uh, over the summer months now, um, pigeons, to me, crop protection, number one. All in all, it is good to get back back out. I mean, I love I love pigeon shooting. I've done it all my life, you know. And you know, it's great to get the gun, the Browning Maxes, you know, get the cartridges out and just get out, 
and do what I've done all my life, which is which is protect the crops uh, from a very sporting bird. But all in all, you know, we mustn't lose sight of the fact that we must respect our quarry. Jeff there showing that he can still do it. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, a special report from the Game Fair 2019. From gun dogs to gamekeeping, conservation to clay competitions, the Game Fair was packed with every field sports activity imaginable. With hot news and new products all around the show, we chatted to exhibitors to find out what's really big this year. First, Italian firearms giant Beretta. Uh, this is the new Asphalt Free, the first one in 20 gates. The Asphalt Free is the new premium uh, hunting gun that we launched last year at High WA, and after the 12 gates, is now available in 20 gates. Uh, the engraving is a beautiful one. If a new technology is a 5 axis laser engraving, and you can choose between a deep scope engraving, an English code one, or uh, a game scene, the wood is a class 4, so very high. Oh, the gun is very reliable because we have tested, we have shot more than 10,000 rounds with a few prototypes, mm -hmm. no problems incur. So it's as good, as reliable as a Beretta gun, but with a new beautiful line and our premium finishing. Staying with shotguns, Browning's new Pro Master was enjoying some success on the play line. Pro Master is the new addition to the Pro range. So on all Pro models, you would get a selection of triggers, a selection of pads, eight chokes, VCI gun stock, a weight system for the for the fore end and for the stock. So it's a fully adjustable um, competition gun. Uh, and this is the new um, sporting model called Pro Master. It's got a mid-size uh, adjustable top rib, as you can see, with a very neat wheel system here, which adjusts the angle of the uh, of the rib. Um, also features a, a very nice, uh, aggressive-looking uh, Monte Carlo adjustable stock uh, with a lovely, lovely grip here, and a, and a range of pack my pads as well, which uh, are particularly nice. They have the hard uh, heel part on the pad to stop the anti-snagging. Uh, but as I say, it's a fully adjustable uh, competition gun, so it's got the full weight systems that fore and aft, and uh, you can set it up exactly how you like it. And Clay Shooting Classic sponsors ATA showed us what's new in their stable. ATA have been working in conjunction with the Sportsman Gun Centre to bring out a bit of an exclusive here for both the trader and retail. So what I have here in my hands is the new ATA side plate. It's what we call a silver line side plate. So a lot of our customers were familiar with a silver line box lock, but now we have introduced a side plate model with upgraded woodwork steel. This gun is complete with five multi-chokes as standard. It comes in a variety of different barrel lengths, anywhere from 28 inch to 32 inch, in game configuration or sporting configuration. The barrels for the sporting model are matte finished, so very resilient. The game model has a traditional blue barrel, shiny, very elegant looking. Really appreciate ATA's efforts by bringing out a new model. Again, they've listened to what the UK trader wants, their retail public wants, and guys, girls, anyone who's getting into shooting, this gun retails at $1,174.99. It's fantastic value for money. Above the impressive NV viewing tunnel, we got a glimpse of what's new in the world of night vision. So it's a brand new model, um, brand new this year. Um, these are our first samples. In fact, they landed with us almost three, four days ago. Um, there's two models. There's going to be an N450 and an N470. It sort of fits in between the Photon and the Digisight. Um, so your Photon's your entry level unit um, and your Digisight's your top end sort of night vision unit. Um, and this sort of fits comfortably in the middle. So on the N470, uh, base mag six times, um, and then it'll bump up through its mag ranges all the way up to 24 times. Um, and that's quite a step for Yukon and Pulsar because that's the highest that they've sort of reached. So price on the N470 is going to be 889, um, suggested retail. For what you get for a night vision unit, it's, it's, it's budget, really. 
It wasn't all about new products this year. Conservation was one of the main talking points of the show, with the general licence cancellation clearly still on people's minds. Enforcer Decoys told us about the effects it had had on them. We've had a lot of people come on, saying like the others is on, pigeons are hitting the cops now very hard, learning the pest controls, other GL fiasco, some firms are still un uncertain whether to let the lads on the land and shoot the pigeons which is a bit annoying to the lads who's got the permission but I suppose if we put it out there, all the positive stuff, what we're doing uh, yeah. of, the, of the pigeons controls, all the damage they're doing and the amounts of thousands yeah. of pounds of costs every year, we go to the general public, it's only a good thing for us really isn't it? In the shooting community in general, from crow shooting to pigeon shooting to shooting grouse, pheasant living pheasant, we put billions into the economy every year so if, it, you know, if that stops people going on well, basically on benefits because they're taking jobs away from gamekeepers, pickers up, beaters, obviously pest control in the cities and in the, in the countryside as well. So we need to put a positive view across the, the general public out there to show what a job we do, uh, not just in the countryside but obviously in cities and towns. We've got to like, stand up for ourselves, we've got to carry on doing what we're doing, which is legal. You know, there's nothing wrong what we're doing now, pest control, all our game shooting, we're going to be proud of what we do as well, we don't want to be hiding what we do. Because if, we, if, we, if we seem to be hiding what we do, which is a legal activity, people think we're, we're hiding it because of, for the wrong reasons. So we've got to stand up, we need to stand up for ourselves and fight back. And the UK's biggest shooting organisation, Basque, told us what we can do to stop anything like that happening again. So the first thing is, know your law. So general licence is part of the pressure we got was the fact there's far too much on social media with people blatantly not understanding how general licences work and their responsibilities. So read them, understand them, abide by them. That's message one. Message two is the next pressure we've got in at the moment is about game bird releasing. So that you know, there's Wild Justice again have then used their legal mechanism to put pressure on death for about releasing game birds. So how we protect ourselves is download the code of good shooting practice and those five golden rules and know them because I bet if you have a walk around this show not many people will be able to tell you what the five golden rules are that's the problem yeah we need to know what they are because they're the things that keep us safe so basically don't just talk the talk walk the walk make sure you're sustainable business as usual from a certain perspective but not enough people understood general licenses and realized they're an annual thing you need to read them and still, yeah, so that's a, a good conversation topic for people to keep in mind of. And we have consultations running um, in Scotland at this moment in time. We're expecting one in England shortly. So, you know, this one's going to run a little bit longer, so people need to be still switched on about general licences and about pest control. Continuing to prove that shooters make the best conservationists, Ely Hawke gave us an update on the environmental credentials of their wads. So we've launched now the VIP Steel Pro Eco Wad, but for the game loads. So this is 32 gram, three shot, and five shot in steel, using the new Bio Wad Pro Eco Bio Wad technology. The stocks are in now. We're really pleased that they're here. We've got everything we need. We've got uh, enough for the trade to get a sample in, the shooters to call off stock to have a go at and see how they get on with them before the wild fowling season really kicks off in uh, September. Obviously we knew they weren't because we've been testing them rigorously for the last you know, 12, 12 to 18 months. And uh, So I, I think we've really, um, we've been tested but I think the product itself is performing very well under those conditions. I'm a wild fowler myself and you feel profoundly guilty frankly these days when you're, you're there out there on the pristine marsh. I love my wild fowling but we are using plastic wads still and we've been really excited to work with. Uh, with Ely uh, to help promote this, this solution that they've got, the Eco World solution. Not least because we have to be realistic about the future of, of lead ammunition as well. Heading back to the clay line, we grabbed some hearing protection on the way from SENS. We've had the privilege of launching the DX range for, for SENS this weekend. Um, it's going to be um, the, the next addition to the complete SENS range. So they're going to be re replacing some of the current uh, programs um, with some new stuff. Um, we've got a DX1, a DX3. Um, the DX1 is the new universal program that's going to be available. It's going to have a deeper battery tray as a standard, so you're going to have the standard long life batteries. You're going to have Sense Passives as a standard option as well. Um, and then we've got the new DX3, which has a, a game program, a clear program, and a new tactical mode as well, which is more designed for the rapid fire. 
um, people who you know, shoot pistols and other things like that. And then we've got the DX range, the DX Premier, which is the DX5, uh, which is we launched at the British Shooting Show a couple of years back, uh, half a sense, um, and there's been really a lot of interest in, in the new range, um, which has been going on really well. One thing you definitely needed this year was good footwear, and luckily Ariat were there to provide it. It's raining hard as we talk, so in particular we're, long, we're talking about the Burford Wellington boot. This has our ATS sole technology, so lots of comfort under foot, strong durable natural rubber, and this one's got a neoprene lining as well, so we're getting people to come and try that on, and once people get it on their feet they, they really, really like it. So that's our Burford insulated welly. In particular we're talking about the Defiant uh, Catalyst. So last year we were here we got a huge demand for people asking for so female sizes in a really great hunting stalking boot. So we're launching the Catalyst Defiant, packed full of all the same features that you get in the men's version. The whole story with Ariat is we've been around for, for 25 years, uh, durability, comfort and you know products that are really built for the consumer. This is the Burford Insulated Zip. This hits the market in November. So same great features where you have the ATS Pro insole, so really good cushioning underfoot. The, the insulation from the neoprene. But this has also got an aerogel lining as well that gives extra insulation and that's, uh, that's a real innovation for, for our event. And finally, we got to see the shooting tripod that everyone's talking about. What we have here is the new Wicked Recon tripod um, from Wicked Light. It's very light, very maneuverable. As you can see, we can adjust the gun in many different directions and it holds various different sizes of guns. Um, excellent piece of kit, especially for long stands, foxing, shooting, things like that. People are just amazed at what it can do um, and how versatile it is and the, the many different positions that you can use. And you can use it prone, you can use it standing, uh, especially a big hit with some of the older people um, who don't really want to be holding a rifle for a long time. You know, it's, uh, we actually had a, a guy here who was partially disabled earlier on, uh, and this was right up his street. He really um, that's kind of what he's been looking for for a long time. That's all we've got time for, but if you want to see more from the Game Fair, we'll be uploading more short videos on our channel this week. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for more videos. Plus, if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sports, looking after you. This has been the Shooting Show.